All right, welcome back to Getting Past the Premium, everybody. We're in a much different setting today. Yeah, it's like uh, between the two ferns episode. Yeah, but it's one in between us. It's kind of the opposite. Is that my plant? <laughs> yeah, <it's, laughs> we had to shift some stuff around. All right? Oh my goodness. Conference rooms are in use, so between we had to move. Between the snake plant. Yeah. <laughs> Or the you, snake plant. You didn't you. notice it left your office, so that's the worst part. No, nah, I had no idea, actually. Are you watering it? <laughs> yeah. Holy uh, cow. So, anyways, um, we wanted to continue, uh, you know, the conversations between you and I just about more specifically around sales and, you know, what we're doing from a sales perspective, what we see working in the industry from a sales perspective, and kind of focusing on a topic as it relates to sales, sales process. Um so that everybody can can you know get out and utilize some of those things that we're learning. So, what we thought we'd focus on today, right, was centers of influence, mm -hmm. um, and you know that's a, a term used in the industry for referral sources. Essentially, we can get into that a little bit more specifically. But essentially, having a strategy around getting referrals through centers of influence, um, it is a strategy, right, to go and do it. It takes a consistent uh, model strategy to uh, go do that, to build those relationships, and uh, that's what we want to go through today. So first, though, what's your definition of a COI? That's a great question, because I think people define it differently. Yeah. And, you know, I think a lot of people are to the point where they hear, you know, COI and they just roll their eyes. Yeah. You know, it's like it's a worn down topic to go get new business. I feel like um, I we define them in inside our firm as advocates of our firm. Mm -hmm. Right. Which starts to change the way that we think about COIs and how we develop them and um you know, cultivate them to get referrals from. And which is much different than, you know, tr I would maybe say this is more of a traditional way of thinking around a COI where, you know, we're looking for introductions into yeah. different businesses or to different people. Yeah. yeah. I think advocates is a great term because essentially you want these people because it doesn't have to be the traditional sense either where it's like, oh, it needs to be a banker or a mortgage broker or a attorney, you know, those, those could be certainly great COI sources, but could be much broader than that. And essentially, you know, when you think of the term advocate, it's somebody that believes in what you're doing and in, in your model and the value you're bringing to clients such that they want to advocate that on your behalf mm -hmm. to other people that might uh, benefit from that, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so I also encourage people think creatively about who those people can be, right? So it doesn't have to be, again, those people in those trusted advisor roles. Those are great. But it could be, you know, a golf course pro or, a, you know, something like that where somebody's just very connected and believes in what you're doing and would be trusted if they uh, told somebody that, you know, this person can help you with that problem, mm -hmm. right? Somebody that's having a lot of those discussions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but so then walk down that, that strategy a little bit further, right? Because the if our strategy to go get these relationships is just, well, I'm going to, you know, I'll take these guys out to coffee once every quarter or, you know, buy them a lunch here and there, you know, certainly they're going to know your name, but are they going to be able to advocate your yeah. story on your behalf? Yeah, right? that's right. Well, you got to start there, right? So you have to understand what, how how you're gonna define advocate. And the only way that somebody can really be an advocate for you is to deeply understand what you're doing. Yeah. You know, so that's why some of the traditional strategies that I hear people go implement, like, you know, taking a prospect to launch or a potential COI, prospective COI to launch and, you know, telling them about what you do and asking them if they would keep you in mind next time they run across a, a case that you might be a fit for. Like, again, that's down the introduction route, which mm -hmm. it can work. Yeah. Um, but you have to have a lot more at bats versus really focusing on uh, an, a, a COI that you might have synergy with, which we'll get to here in a second. And then 
uh, having them be advocates. They really have to understand what you do and how you do it. So we talk about how going to launch uh, or, you know, whatever the more traditional strategies are, just don't cut it. Mm -hmm. You really need to bring the COI through your process just like they would become a client if they're not and educate them in a deep fashion over a period of time about what you do and how you do it. Yeah. So that when you're, you know, they're sitting out in front of uh, somebody who has a need, they, they can gather from that COI that there's passion there for the organization that it's not just an introduction, but it's a strong recommendation that they go and talk to you and enter your process. They can describe what they're going to experience as they walk through the process, yep. et cetera. Like, that's a much different thing than, you know, hey, uh, yeah, no problem. I'll shoot you an, an email intro to Elliot. Yeah. Well, and taking a step back to what you've said at the start is – We've all been there where we get a referral from a COI and we just go, oh, why, why is he sending me this? Or why is she, is she telling people uh, this person that they should do business with? Because it's just not your target market. Yeah. It's not somebody you want to do business with. Um, it doesn't fit you know, what you can do for them. Uh, we've all been there. But the reason for that is, is that COI doesn't understand you well enough, your value prop well enough, and who you're targeting well enough to appropriately recommend you to the people that you need to talk to. Yeah. Right? And that's kind of what you're, you're talking about. Well, it's certainly another slice. The only way that they're going to get to uh, um, be able to advocate for you is if they know like who mm -hmm. could be a fit. So going through the process like we talked about, but then you know, deeply understanding uh, who you can provide the most value to is another key component. Yeah. And in order to do that, you have to understand who you can provide the most value to. For sure. Separate story or separate conversation for another day. But, um, you know, obviously you would you need to understand who your target client is, mm -hmm. the value you can bring them, and be able to articulate that to the COI, right? Mm -hmm. So get, get a little bit more uh, tactical with that because there are certain strategies that you know you can use to walk that COI through that process, and I want to make sure everybody understands this is not a one lunch type of a conversation, right? Mm -hmm. It's a you know multifaceted, multi uh, meeting and conversation type of engagement where uh, you're getting so deep with that COI that they understand exactly what you're going to bring to a client if they recommend somebody to you, mm -hmm. right? So talk a little bit more tactical about how you do that. Yeah, I mean, it's all around vetting who they are and what they do and getting to understand them on a deep level first, all right? So if you're, if you're reaching out to them, it's very difficult to reach out to you, Elliot, and be like, hey, will you deeply understand my process mm -hmm. so that you can refer me business? Like, that's pretty tricky, right? Yeah. So. It's all around, you know, uh, implementing your sales process that you use on a day to day in and day out basis to build a relationship with uh, that COI. So, you know, you got to go out and you got to have more of a high level uh, conversation and get to know them and what they do yeah. really well. Um, and you know, after that, you can continue to build on that and bring those, you know, bring your relationship closer to a point where you can ask them to say, hey, you know what, like, I feel like there's some some uh, synergy here. Mm -hmm. I think we could do some things together. Like, would you mind walking through our process now that we've learned a little bit about yours and then start to walk them through yours where they can start to get a deeper understanding of what you do. Yeah. Well, I think that's that's key in so many different areas too because the best way to get a referral is to give a referral, mm -hmm. right? And so if you understand their process, who they're going after, who they're targeting, um, and can give them solid referrals, it's going, going to be the best way for them to reciprocate that 
referrals, which is ultimately what you're trying to do, right? Yeah. In, in a lot of cases, it doesn't yeah. always have to be like that. I do think that that stops a lot of folks from going out and trying it because they're just so focused on creating this reciprocal relationship that just might not exist yet or you, you haven't quite found the angle. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're a good human and, you know, they really like what you do. They don't know anybody else like you in your space. Like, there's still potential there. Mm -hmm. But certainly the most fruitful are ones where you can reciprocate. Yeah. And uh, just think about that from a unique standpoint. Yeah. Well, and that's a good point, too, because I think just thinking about it in terms of value as well uh, is important. You know, if you are, if they're making a recommendation to somebody to talk to you, and you do such a good job for that person that uh, it creates so much value, there's mm -hmm. value back to your COI because mm -hmm. they made that recommendation. 100%. Right? And especially if they're in a uh, close industry where you, you know, your clients are similar and they might need help from an insurance perspective or, yeah. or whatnot. Like, there can be a lot of value there. And even if you're not reciprocating with a referral, you're reciprocating by giving them value back to their client, yeah. you know, and that can be just as if not more important. Yeah, you're <laughs> simply making them look good. Yeah. Making the other advisor that, you know, referred you to the piece of business look, look, look great. Yeah. And there's a lot of value to that. And don't, don't screw it up. Like, mm -hmm. I don't need another referral back. Just don't mess the thing yeah, up that's and true. make me look good, you know? And so, uh, it can be positioned a lot of different ways. Yeah. How do you recommend like, identifying those COIs that, you know, you want to go try to build a relationship with? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, I think there's the obvious answers that are close to, you know, um, one or two degrees away from what you do or, you know, that operate in or around where your target market prospects mm -hmm. are. And then there are the ones that are more, you know, unique and out of the box. Like you mentioned um, Golf Pro, right? Yeah. Um, in our space. And, you know, it's like on the surface, it would be fairly difficult to try to figure out how to reciprocate that, yeah. you know? But... Uh, you some golf lessons? Yeah, hmm. exactly. I mean, I need those, but, you know, different, yeah. different topic. That's true. Um, uh so anyway, you know, you can think about it from a more unique standpoint and uh, over time start to figure out an angle on, on some of those. And that's where we found some of the, uh, I mean, some people have just created amazing COIs because of their ability to think outside of the box mm -hmm. and figure out how to reciprocate in a very unique way to a unique COI that, you know, um, it doesn't always have to be the CPA or the attorney and whatnot. Yeah, I definitely think that gets limited a lot in these conversations because um, we always think about the CPA and the banker and the, I mean, you can name off the five or yep. whatever it is, right? And and those, at the end of the day, though, that doesn't say we shouldn't build those relationships. We should, absolutely. Um, but I think one of the best ways to uh, figure out who you should get to know in this capacity is talk to your clients, mm -hmm. right? Um, they're a wealth of knowledge for uh, the things that they value and what other clients like them might value, and that's in their relationships as well, mm -hmm. you know? So who are, um, you know, trusted advisors in your organization, client, mm -hmm. you know? Who are the people that, you know, you wouldn't want to live without as, a, as it pertains to running your business? <laughs> You know, having those types of discussions and questions and getting that, that list and and keeping that over time and then take those folks out. You're going to figure out some of them you don't really want to know. You don't think that there's synergy there. Mm -hmm. um, but then some of them you're going to say, okay, I, I think that there's opportunity here for us to work together. Um, and then you, you take them through your strategy or your process as we've talked about, right? Mm -hmm. But that can be a great way to um, find a lot of those types of COIs. Um, is, yeah. again, through your, through your core clients, who you want to replicate. Yeah, who they trust. And yeah. then, you know, take it deeper than that and start asking, you know, 
how they engage in certain processes that they do on a day in and day out basis and who they interact with. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of times, you know, we've talked, we've, we've talked about this and have uh, had them on the podcast when we chatted around um, getting referrals from uh, m mortgage brokers, right? Mm -hmm. Cause there's a, there's a point in the process where there's a need and there's a, there's a direct incentive for the mo m mortgage broker to have insurance in place so that they can get the deal done. Yeah. So like those examples exist throughout a bunch of different processes that your clients interact with on a day in and day out basis. Yeah. So is that something that you, you actively search out, you know, do you actively like try to find those areas that, uh, that exists in, or is that something that you naturally comes through? You know, you, some of you get a call from a mortgage broker that's like, Hey, I need help here. Can yeah. you help what, or both? Well, both. I would certainly be open minded to those angles, but yeah, I think it can be more effective and impactful if you can have a strategy around it, you know, yeah, I agree and, uh, start to define it a little bit more. Uh, yeah. Well, I think it, it ever, we all or we should have prospecting strategies, right? Um, and a lot of folks have or know I'm going to make so many cold calls or I'm going to do so many reach outs or marketing or whatever. And, and this is no different at the end of the day. You know, you should have a strategy around how you're going to build these relationships if this is an avenue that you're looking at to, um, to go down to uh, drive referrals. Mm -hmm. And uh, thinking about it through that lens makes you sit down and say, okay, how, I, I, maybe I have one of these people. Yeah. right now that's working really well. what's working there and then how can i create a system around that to replicate it over mm -hmm. the course of time and i think like you mentioned maybe we we dive a little bit deeper on that but it's important to put the focus on them at the first part of that right yeah. of this process then shifting to um focus being on you um your process your value go a little bit deeper on that because i think there's some nuances in there that are important like Getting the, that COI to your office mm -hmm. uh, or to, you know, come to you type of thing. So you can show them what a client or a prospect might be experiencing. Little things like that that talk through a little bit more specifically that people may not be thinking about as it relates to a COI strategy. Yeah. So, yeah, I think this all comes fairly naturally. If you can implement a sweet sales process with them up front, right? And what I mean by that is like, you really got to take some time and take it slow and develop a genuine relationship with them, like care deeply about what they do and how they do it. And, you know, as I mentioned before, you can implement your own sales process to be able to do that. We obviously have, have ours that we've talked about, but that's essentially what it is, is, you know, you're going into that initial meeting and you're talking higher level and just, it's more of a get to know you type conversation and you know, you're, you're getting to know them. And if that's natural and conversational, uh, which it should be like, they're going to naturally be inquisitive about you. Yeah. So that the next time you go back into their office and you start diving a little bit deeper, uh, again, by asking good questions about their process and how you might be able to help them. After that meeting, it's, it's, it's usually very natural for them to start asking like, well, well you know, what are you doing? How mm. can I help you? Like, yeah. if you have a genuine interest in trying to help me, how can I help you? Yeah. And that's a good test too, to know that you're at the point to be able to pitch, if you will, that, you know, you, why don't you why don't you come over to my office next meeting? And there is some psychology around that that's very important. And you know, come into my office the next meeting and let's sit down and we'll take you through our process. Mm -hmm. But um, you mentioned something earlier that made me think about this as well. You know, how many COIs do you need? And I think if their introduction COIs, you can't have enough of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you need 150. Yeah. 
or so, you know? Or uh, so. <laughs> um, if they're advocates, you might need three. Yeah. That's a great point. So, uh, you know, if they have the ability to get two or three names on your desk every week because they truly believe in what you're doing and they're out having conversations and they're saying, hey, you need to go talk to Elliot. And not just, hey, you need to go talk to Elliot, but, you know, here's why. Here's what you're going to experience. Here's the value that they can add to you. Like, it's really a no-lose situation. Just go have a conversation with them. You're out an hour, and if you don't like it, then you're better educated anyway. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you don't need a lot. You need, and that allows you to invest more time. Because yeah. I think a lot of people listening, and certainly when we first start doing this, it's like, holy shit, like, I got, how much time do I need to spend? Yeah. And what do I need That's to do? Point. And it's going to take me a year. And it's like, yeah, it's going to take you a year. We're not building introduction relationships. Yeah. No, I think that is that is spot on. And um, you also don't necessarily want that amount of uh, advocates at the end of the day. I mean, obviously, you, you want to be getting enough prospects to allow you to hit your goals, right? Um, but I think the, the end point there that you were making about you want to be able to spend the right amount of time with those that are advocating for you. And, you know, you just can't do that. You, you get to a certain threshold, mm -hmm. right? Um, to be able to nurture those relationships the right way and enough so that those continue. If you, if you go to have too many of those people you're trying to nurture, the quality of that's going to go down and you're going to get, they're going to start to naturally send you less people to talk to for sure you got to keep the experience up and look there's some obvious things that we're just glazing over that have to exist right like you need to know your value proposition and there has to be one right? yeah <laughs> like for, for to, to create an advocate it, it, somewhere along the line they're gonna say you know what do you do that er, everyone else doesn't do yeah and, and it needs to be simple too why you yeah you gotta you gotta be able to wade through that stuff but um you know you got to know you got to know who uh, you, you got to have a process yep and you got to be able to bring them through that process and be a, be, be intentional and you got to keep your experience up you got to deliver on your reputation you know things like that that are, are all important in, in this strategy but you know if if you're already out winning business Think about why, if you don't know why, um, and then use that, you know, use that material to go out and help develop your COIs. Yeah. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that. Um, one of the things that I think is important as well that I, I want you to hit on is how important is it to be uh, dialed in on after you get the referral, the communication back to the COI, right? Uh, a lot of times I think, you know, they call us up and say, hey, I've got Joe, need some help with this, Ryan. I want to send him your way. Great, thanks. Sends Joe your way and then you just never talk to him or you, know, you don't communicate back to him about where you're at in that process mm -hmm. with Joe. Um, I think that's such an important and underutilized part of your COI strategy because you don't want that COI ever thinking like, I wonder what ever happened with that. Like, hope, hope they did a good job. Oh. I guess no news is good news. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to say, keep them up to speed on almost every step of the process. Hey, I really appreciate you sending Joe over. I had a great first conversation with him. I think we're going to be able to help him. I'll keep you in the loop as that moves forward. And then, you know, you have the next meeting and it's like, Hey man, uh, want to let you know, we're going to put some stuff in place for Joe uh, help him with this and this. Great. Again, I appreciate that referral over because you're you're controlling the fact that that COI knows you provided value to Joe. Yeah. Right. You don't assume that Joe's going to tell them that, or that they're going to hear that, or that they're in contact with that person regularly. Mm -hmm. You know. So you want to make sure um, that you're communicating that back, such that that COI knows you did what they sent them to do. Right. Yeah. Yeah, well, you're exactly right. So that's step number one is keep them, but uh, keep them in the loop. But the best thing that you can do is get that prospect to provide feedback to the COI. Oh yeah. Through how? How do you do that? Well, number one, by 
delivering, <laughs> doing a good job. Yeah, you gotta if you if you're if you're providing outstanding work, um, you know, and they're having a truly good experience, like they're highly likely to do that. Mm-hmm. But you know, there's natural places in the process too to be able to encourage them to reach back out to the COI and just like thank them for sending them your way yeah. and whatnot. And if they can hear that. Um, mm-hmm. that, that's a, that's a huge deal. The other little trick that you can use is what we call third party compliments. And all you're doing there is just complimenting the, um, COI to the prospect. To the pro- okay. Yeah. Yep. And you know, if you do that enough times throughout the process, it's likely that one of them is going to get back and hit the COI's mm-hmm. ears. And that also is good. Mm-hmm. Um, so those are two kind of not so obvious uh, just tips for, you know, keeping that COI greased and making sure that they're, uh, you know, they're happy with uh, what happened with their prospect. Yeah. So then one of the things that we ran into a lot how do you handle the conversation when COI sends you somebody you don't want to do business with? Because that can be a tricky conversation. And what I think I hear from a lot of folks is like, well, when I get that referral, you feel obligated to work on the piece of business because yeah. your COI sent you a referral. Well, uh, hopefully that doesn't happen first. I because, that, yeah. you know, if you, you have an job, advocate yeah. that understands who deeply, who you're, who you're best able to serve, hopefully it limits the misses significantly, mm-hmm. right? But to me, this is a much harder problem to solve if you have an introduction COI oh, because yeah. they don't know, Yeah. right? If, if they're an advocate COI and the advocate just misses once, it's very easy for you to pick up the phone and be like, hey, Ellie, do you remember when we were having this conversation in my office about, you know, who we are best able to go serve? And, you know, this feels a little direct with me talking through it right now, but, you know, this is the gist, right? It, it in essence, gives you a hook to go back to in the conversation and explain to them who we're looking for and why. Yeah. And reminding them. That's a much easier conversation then going back to an introduction COI mm-hmm. and having to educate them on why they just sent over a bad referral. Yeah. Right? You almost don't do it. You're almost just like, hey, you know, something popped up or whatnot, and, you know, <laughs> they went another direction, but please send me the next one you got. Yeah. Like, that's way more awkward. Oh, 100%. Than having an advocate COI and being able to go back and just have an honest conversation. Because depending on where the relationship is, if it's in a good spot with the COI, you're able to sit down with them and say, hey, you know, we're trying to work on referring business back to each other, back and forth to each other. Like, let's let's talk for 30 minutes on how we might be able to get more effective at doing that. Yeah. Do you remember that one that you sent me? Like... This was going on and that was going on. It probably wasn't quite the right fit. But next time, if you run across this or that, we might be able to provide them more value. Yeah. That's completely different. So I think it answers itself by just going deeper with the COI and making them advocates. Yeah. I think it's spot on. I mean, it, if, they, if you've had that conversation, you can always reflect back on it um, so that they're reminded of who you know you can do business with but i think it's also being honest with not only yourself the the client or prospect and then that coi that there is a specific type of client that you can help best Mm -hmm. right and i think we because we you know might sell insurance and everybody has to buy insurance you know we feel like we should be able to or uh you know have a product for everybody Mm -hmm. when in reality if we're doing things right we should set up our models such that you know, we're helping, or, or we have a very defined model to help a certain type of client. Mm-hmm. Um, and some clients don't fit that mold, right? And we're going to have to say no. Um, but you got to be honest with yourself when and if that COI sends one of those over and just say, hey, this is just a little bit outside of our bailiwick, um, you know, and everything you just mentioned, walk back through that conversation. 
Mm -hmm. uh, but it's so key. I mean, I don't, I think people uh, want to grab on every single one of those because it's an opportunity and it's revenue and I got to hit my goals and all the stuff. But I think being honest with yourself about who you're going to, to target, who you can bring value to is, is so important. Yeah. What did we miss in this conversation, Ryan, about COIs, using that as a strategy to grow, et cetera? Just don't, don't let them die. If you can. Don't let them die? Yeah. I don't want anybody to die. Well, um, let me phrase it differently. Yeah, that might be good. <laughs> <laughs> don't let the COI like, fall out of touch. Is that better? Yeah, got okay. it. No. I started going down the road of fall of, and then <laughs> I was like, "Shit, here we go again." Uh, all right, don't 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 let them fall out of the process. Yeah, right. Because there's so much work to get them to become an advocate. Like they might not have a scenario for a bit, mm -hmm. so you got to deploy your uh, relationship skills and capabilities to keep that drip going with them yeah. right and keep that relationship hot with them so that you know all the hard work that you just put into making them become an advocate just doesn't dry up so i'd say that's one of the you know we don't these things don't start off hot or they might start off hot and then fall off quick mm -hmm. so uh it's just it's super important that um you stay engaged and continue to provide them value in different ways that we should be familiar with through prospecting to, you know, keep top of mind and continue to work on it. Yep. Couldn't agree more. Well, hopefully everybody uh, took a lot of good stuff out of that. Um, it's definitely a strategy we found successful uh, and I think can be replicated. Um, so with that, we will sign off this week and see everybody next week, right? All right. Thanks, man. See you.